Hey guys, today we're doing a demo of Remote Winbox in December of 2022. Let's log in and get started. So first thing you'll see when logging into Remote Winbox is what our customers like to call the NOC dashboard. In the NOC dashboard, you can see an overall health screen of what your network looks like for your MicroTik deployment. And starting from left to right, you can see routers that are in the green, that means we can communicate with them successfully in the red that we're detecting is offline and in the yellow that show permissions issues or other communication problems uh, means that we know that it's online, but our system's having some trouble communicating with it. When we look at the router listing, you'll be able to hover there and see what the errors are that might be going on with those routers. In the alert section, you'll see security updates as well as routers going online and offline and some indications of scheduled maintenance or other items that might come into the notifications. Over in router map, you get an indication of what your deployment looks like for online and offline. And you can zoom in and start to see where you're having an outage possibly or where you've got some offline routers. So it's a real good way and it, this, this part auto refreshes every couple of minutes. So you can get a good sense of if you're having an outage, where that outage is starting and, and what routers are participating in that uh, degraded service. Down in this area, we have the favorite router and that allows me to see a quick historical view of how has this router's behavior looked like for the last day, week or month. And this allows you, again, this page refreshes every couple of minutes and has a good indicator of how my bandwidth looks on my favorite router. So again, if you're having some trouble, you might see a spike in bandwidth or a drop in bandwidth that's meaningful and get an early notification that something's going on there. And then finally, overall, I can see the CPU, RAM and disk on my whole deployment and whether things are looking in the green and healthy or if I've got some in the red that are maybe needing to get looked at. If we take a look at the router listing, you'll get a lot more information about each router and we've got a good indicator here of what's going on on the network. I can sort by any of these columns here. So if I wanted to say, hey, which routers are offline, I can sort by them and I can see, hey, if I hover here, when was it last seen? How long has it been offline for? And then those ones that I mentioned that are yellow, uh, we're having some trouble communicating with them. So I can see here, it looks like the, the API service is disabled on a couple of these. So if I switch back to online routers here, one of the nice things about our dashboard is that there's a super search here. So I can search by MAC address, serial number, system identity, um, IP address, uh, and tags. So I can sort and filter here and say, hey, show me all of my home routers that uh, are also running OSPF. And I can filter there and it drops down and shows me those router infos. And then if I added a note, uh, that's also searchable here. So you'll see, I can jump into the search here, put R6, and there we go, we filter down. And let's jump into the first icon here for router health. So within router health, I can see what has this router's uh, individual performance looked like over the last day, week, and month. And live view will start drawing a real-time graph and showing me, hey, what's the bandwidth look like right now tra traveling through this router? Uh, so it looks like he doesn't have much traffic going on. If I jump into a router that has a lot of traffic, you'll be able to see that happen in real time. The historical data, however, is uh, five minutes old data and can also show day, week, and month. And so I can jump back here, what was the traffic like for the last week and what were my spikes and et cetera. We're tracking that for bandwidth and CPU, RAM, and disk. Additionally, I can jump into more info here, and I've got some additional details about this router. And if this router was uh, an LTE device with a SIM card in it, I'd also have over here some LTE info. Another item that's nice on the router health page here for the admin staff, uh, your customer service can jump in here and take a look and say, hey, what's the, the LAN network look like over the last day, week, and month? So if a customer calls in on Monday to complain about a problem on Friday or Saturday, I can easily jump back here, look at the week view and start to load up, hey, uh, I can see this orange device consumed, maybe if I'm on a 30 meg plan, uh, this orange device basically took it all up at, at 5 p.m. 
uh, so I can get a good indicator of what are the devices on my network, how are they doing for bandwidth, and which ones do we maybe need to take some additional control on and, and maybe put some limits on them. Additionally, if I switch back here to the individual view, I mentioned that uh, Evan's PC there was doing some in stuff. I can jump on to my individual zoom in view and take a look at what was his signal strength looking like for the last day, week, month, and what were his rates and how much bandwidth was he consuming at each time interval here. Next up, just like many platforms, we've got a speed test here. So we can jump in and select a, a speed test here. If your deployment has multiple speed testers, you can pick them from a drop down list here, hit run speed test, and this will go ahead and run a speed test from that micro tick to the selected head end. And within a couple of seconds, you'll have a good indicator of what's the speed of capacity available for that micro tick. Next up, let's take a look at the end user view. So end user views, this is the screen where you'll invite uh, email addresses to be able to view a read only for this router. Once you've email invited a user to manage this router, they'll get an activation email. And once they've clicked that, they'll be able to log into this dashboard and they'll see this view right here. And so you'll see they have a drop down list where they can pick between multiple routers if you've enabled their email to manage multiple routers. And then they can look at their most recent speed test, run a new speed test, look at the live view, and a lot of the same details that you saw from the other uh, admin screen are available here. And then importantly, they'll be able to check out their uh, SSID and passphrase. You'll notice it's all read-only stuff. They don't have any capability to change or break anything on their network. Again, they'll be able to jump in, see what the bandwidth looks like, what their usage is, all of the devices and their signal strengths and bandwidth, and then the same overall view so we can say, hey, again, if I'm having a problem, I can jump in here and see which device is it that's causing my bandwidth to be spiked and all the way full. Next up, we'll take a look at the edit router screen. You'll see here I get a little bit of details about his IP, Mac, serial number, etc. I can adjust the tags from here, but I can also adjust the tags from the other screen. I'll show that here in a moment. Uh, I can change the nickname here and then enable additional remote access port is the ability to pass a port through here. So customers use this to, uh, for me in particular, I use this to connect to port uh, 8888 on the MicroTik, and then I forward that 8888 to 443 on my LAN so that I can access my fiber gateways uh, web UI by using remote Winbox. Uh, enable the email notifications lets us know when this router goes online or offline, you'll get email notified. Uh, the favorite is showing on that NOC dashboard. VPN Health will check periodically the status of the VPN tunnel. And sometimes there are conditions where, especially if the network isn't, uh, just has a little bit of micro outages that last for a couple of milliseconds and then it comes back, what can happen is the tunnel can get hung. And so it stays up, but it's actually not able to pass traffic. So the VPN health check will send some traffic periodically over the tunnel. And if it finds that the tunnel's gone stale, it'll reset the tunnel from the client side. Finally, you've got address uh, and lat long updates, and, and then you can also update the notes here. And finally, from our router listing screen, we've got this button here that says port forward. This just shows all the IP firewall NAT rules that uh, are desk NATs so that I can easily remove or view what the current port forwards are. And this will show port forwards that were created by UPNP. And then I can easily add uh, from here, my customer service team doesn't have to go into Winbox. They can just add a quick port forward for, again, a gaming system or whatnot, and be able to update those port forwards really easily from this dashboard. And then I mentioned that you can quickly and easily update uh, tags from here. So I can very quickly jump in here and say, hey, uh, there we go, update the tag, save it. And there we've got the tag updated. Okay, next up we've got security and we've got two portions here, account security and router security. Under account security, we've got all of the IP addresses that are allowed to communicate to my deployment of MicroTix. 
And so what that means is that if I pull Winbox open over here, and first thing I'm gonna do is grab the URL that allows me to connect to my Microtik. And now you'll see that I'm able to connect to that Winbox session uh, using a URL provided by Remote Winbox. So what I'm gonna do now is purge that from my account security uh, the IP address that I'm currently connecting with is this guy here. And so if I purge him from the system, that is now going to make it so that my routers are no longer reachable from anywhere in the world except for those couple of IPs. And you'll see here now I get connection refused. Um, that's because my IP is no longer associated with my account. And so if I head back to the router listing, you'll notice that our system detected that this browser session is using an IP that's not allowed to talk to my deployment, and I can fix that. And as soon as I fix it, uh, a couple of seconds later, Winbox is trying behind the scenes, and there it goes, jumped in and was able to communicate to my router. The next portion of security is the router security. In here, we're scanning for indicators of the Maris exploit, which was the most popular exploit on Microtik. So if we see any indicators of stuff like IP socks being enabled, uh, there's a couple of icons you can see here that will show warnings and a couple of other ones that are kind of useful. If there's admin with no password, uh, that's always useful to know so that you can get that router secured and locked down, as well as uh, one of our customers uh, reported an issue and we wrote a, a little detector for that scenario. And what happened was that they had safe mode turned on on a router. It was one of their core routers. And months later, the router uh, rebooted and safe mode had been stuck on. So it lost its configuration. And I'll, I'm about to show our backup manager, but with backup manager, they were able to log in, take a backup, and restore within a couple of minutes all of the missing VLAN configuration that, that disappeared. But fortunately, now we detect for safe mode being stuck on and you'll get an icon warning here also, if that's true. So speaking of backup manager, I can jump in here and at any time I can take a backup now uh, and that will go ahead and take a backup within a couple of seconds. And then I can always come in here and I can look at all my backups that are available. The system automatically takes one backup every day. We keep those backups for 30 days and then we start cycling aging those out. And then we always save the first of the month forever. So if I do have that scenario come up where I need to replace a router, uh, I can view or download the config. And importantly, if I need to say, hey, what was the configuration a while ago compared to now? I can do that easily, compare here, and you'll see here, okay, I've got something that changed, and then here's something that doesn't exist and used to. Next up is our firmware management. If we take a look at firmware manager, you can see easily which routers have firmware updates available and whether they're on a specific uh, firmware train. So I've noticed that here I've got a development firmware and here I've got some stable and long-term. Maybe I wanna manage my uh, deployment to always be using long-term and I come over and I find one that is not using long-term. Well, from here, I can go ahead and grab this guy, switch him to long-term and there we go. He is now on long-term. Additionally, I can always sort and filter here, and let's say I want to update all my home routers. I can just select them all, hit schedule update, and I want to do an update in the maintenance window, 2 a.m. Submit. At 2 a.m., all of those routers will trigger a both system package upgrade and a system router board upgrade and reboot. So within 10 minutes of 2 a.m., all of my routers will have a double update performed uh, with the two reboots and come into the system. And if I ever want to look at how my updates have gone, I can head over here to reports, look at the firmware audit, and here I have indications of which routers were upgraded, how, what they went from and to when it occurred, and which user triggered that update. Additionally, if I decide, hey, today is not a good day for the maintenance window, uh, firmware upgrade, it's just as easy as hitting remove update and those updates will no longer occur.
Next up is our login manager, which is a Radius-like implementation that is super easy to use. The way this works is I add a user up here and my new user, and that user will have access to all of the routers that have been actively assigned in the dashboard here. So you'll see I have full permissions and this router is active. So I'm gonna head back to my Winbox here, put in my new user, and you can see there I'm able to log in to my router and then we'll just revoke this. So we'll delete that user. And now you can see that that guy no longer has access. And so just as easy as that, I can either add a new employee, add a new contractor, and they'll have access to dozens, hundreds, or thousands of microticks in an instant. And in the same way, I can revoke that, that access super easy and quickly. Next up is our user manager. So we've got uh, some controls over who can access this dashboard and what level of access they have. So one of the things that's very common is that your customer service team may not need to have as much access as the rest of the team. And so you might allow them to view the dashboard, look at some read-only settings, and maybe update the firmware. But you don't want them to have access to some of the other more powerful uh, portions of the dashboard like Fleet Commander and security. And so in here, the dashboard admin can set the privileges available for each group. And when you add users, you decide which group those users belong to. So speaking of power, one of the most powerful features in our dashboard is Fleet Commander. Fleet Commander allows you to run any arbitrary command on one, some, or all of your microticks. Again, we've got the ability to search and sort, so I can grab all of my home routers and I could run any arbitrary command. And so popular use cases here are, for example, if I added a new DNS server, I could go in here and say IP DNS server set and put my new IPs and then deploy that to all of my microtechs in one step. Other use cases that we found interesting were that one customer purchased another ISP and they had a whole bunch of microtechs that they added to our dashboard and they wanted to know which ones had VLAN 100 configured on them because that was meaningful to them. So they did an interface print find where VLAN ID equals 10, ran that against their entire deployment, and within a few minutes, they had a, a report that showed all of the routers that had VLAN 10 assigned to them. This can also be used for troubleshooting. So another use case has been when you need to find a MAC address, find an IP address, or perhaps do a trace route against several different routers in your de deployment that you want to verify that they're all taking the same path to the internet. And then obviously there's always updating a configuration or displaying a configuration value. So I showed the firmware audit report, but we did not take a look at speed tests. So speed test results will just show all of the speed tests that have run on your deployment. Finally, if you've unlocked beta features, uh, you'll see a couple of options available here. And this is where our newest features go. So currently as of December, 2022, the beta listing here will show a couple of Wi-Fi related features that are available. So if I come in here, what happened was that some of our customers said, hey, I need customer service to be able to update some settings. And I don't want those customer service teams to be in Winbox. We don't want them logging into the routers themselves. So we created an easy to use dashboard here under Wi-Fi to allow them to change channel width and frequency for and SSID and passphrase for any router. Uh, this also allows you to do both interface wireless and for CAPSMAN. The other beta listing feature that's currently available is a Wi-Fi scanner. The Wi-Fi scanner can come in here and when you scan the Wi-Fi, it'll take a couple of seconds per radio. And just like many other applications, it'll show you what are the SSIDs and signal strengths around so that you can make an informed decision on what channel you should, you should select for your devices to be configured for. So we can see here that channel six is pretty heavily used, channel one is relatively heavily used, channel 11 is very lightly used in this environment. And this Microtech in particular has three radios, so I also have a WLAN 3, five gigahertz. One of the other cool features that we've added is the scan airtime. 
the scan airtime will temporarily interrupt customer's Wi-Fi. So just be aware of that when you use this button. So that scan will take a couple of seconds and then report back here. And you can see that if I take a look here, the highest used frequency is 2412. And picking any other frequency than 2412 will be better for this particular noise environment. On the five gig, 5180 is the heaviest used. Some other beta features that are in the works are what we're calling Hierarchy View. Hierarchy View allows us to assign some Microtik routers to other routers. And the reason to do so is so that later on, when we update Firmware Manager and Fleet Commander, they can take into account which routers own which routers. And that way we can do updates or commands on the farthest routers from the network first and do the closer ones after. And finally, our OSPF mapper is intended to help visualize your OSPF network. This one's still in the works and needs to be tweaked a little bit because it works okay for a handful of routers, uh, but will not work in the timeout and, and crash your browser for a large number of routers. Today, it only shows warnings when OSPF costs are not matching up. But in the future, this tool will allow you to take a look and visualize your OSPF network, see which paths the network is currently taking to get out to the internet, and report on some situations that are maybe misconfigured or not desirable on the network. Thanks for joining us today for the overview of December 2022 State of Remote Winbox Dashboard. Have a great day and thanks. Thank you.